Okay, we are live. If you are joining us, thank you. Sorry for the mess about. We just had a little technical glitch where we gave you five seconds of Kiahu trying to move locations, which is in itself <laughs> incredible. And it was a journey that we loved. This is the Week in Geek. You are joined by the Bombshells and special guest Kiahu. Hello, everyone. Hi. 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 <laughs> um, hopefully, we'll uh, just put up the new link in Twitter. What's the point in saying that if you're not watching it already? But the, we'll, we'll get the hang of things. Um, if you are watching, make sure you comment during it because we'll always go back to the comments and um, ask them during the show. But to kick things off, I like to do quick fire questions. So starting with Shona. You ready, Shona? I'm going to ask you a yeah, question. Go. You have to say the first thing, first thing that comes into your head. In the world, where is the most favorite place you've ever vis visited? That's so hard. Uh, New Zealand. Perfect. Favorite TV show as a kid? Captain Planet. How many Yay. pairs of glasses do you own? How many pairs of glasses? I have three. Cool. Saber, you are next. What is the last thing you ate? Sausage, chicken sausage sizzle sandwich. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is on your nails today? Uh, same as past few weeks. It's like green. It looks horrible. Next question. <laughs> oh, that you picked your nose and everything. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. The last question is, which Game of Thrones character, female, would you make out with? Uh, uh, um, uh, Sansa is such a babe, but an idiot. I just think she's a babe, but she's an idiot. She's a everyone needs, their, everyone needs that, that hot, dumb person where it's like, shh, yeah. don't talk. Watch. <laughs> so pretty. Um, Taz, Taz, you're next. Yes. You ready? Yes. Sure. Hit me with it. Favorite Star Wars character? Oh, no, I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. Uh, okay, Mace, Windu. Mace Windu. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the best that I've got. Oh, yes. How are you okay. accepted into this video chat? I'm sorry, I've just never been a huge <laughs> Star Wars fan. clearly not a test. I've got a Star Wars wall dedicated to Boba Fett and uh, Han in Car Frozen. I was just going to say Han Solo. Han yeah. is my fave. I really don't like Han Solo. You just have like scoundrels in your life. I like Chewie and R2, the ones that don't yeah, actually do words. Yeah. I like Darth. Darth is the best. And Han. Um, and Taz, your last question, uh, no, your second question is your ha most hated boss in a game. Uh, something from Kingdom Hearts probably, or maybe Final Fantasy Sin in, mm -hmm. in Final Fantasy X. Was a bitch. Yep. No, I'll go with that. And your pet peeve? Smoking. Okay. Sardas, you're up. You ready? Never. Cool. How did you celebrate <laughs> Australia Day? Um, I spent all day working on the new header image for like our Facebook page. <laughs> yeah, you did. It's sexy. We're going to be putting that one up soon. What is the best geeky fashion that you recently purchased? Uh, you asked me that last week, and it was my Mickey Mouse t-shirt. Oh, yes. I, I thought that <laughs> question felt familiar. I was like, this is such a good question. Yeah, because I've used it. Um, point to us your favorite poster on the wall behind you. Um, it's your this favorite. one. It's my, hang on. It's my Conan the Barbarian poster, because I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. And the last question is, what is the ultimate chocolate bar? Ultimate chocolate bar. I like bounties. Yeah. Yeah. Each to their own. Um, and no. our special guest of the week here, who, hello there. You ready for your questions? I'm ready. Number one, how do you say your full name properly? <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Ke ahu pu ehele kuhua nui. Who's your enemy? <laughs> <laughs> Who is my um, enemy? What? Yeah, it sounds like you said, is my enemy. Mm, no. No? <laughs> Very, <Wow. good>. Very <laughs> interesting. Can you say your last name again? No, you can say it all again. It's pretty okay. cool. Oh, anyway. um, whereabouts in Hawaii were you born? Uh, I was born in Honolulu, Oahu. Oahu. I'm going there in November. I'm super excited that I'm going back to Hawaii. Yeah. Um, and question number three, what was your very, very first foray into the acting world? What was the gig that started it all? Uh, very first, I was a raccoon in a rendition of Snow White and the Seven Doors. 
<laughs> Did you have any lines? Did you have to say anything? No, I just was part of the ensemble. It was okay. like first grade. Everybody had a role. That's beautiful. I was sneezy. <laughs> I got Plus really good. At sneezing. I really wasn't wasn't a good enough actor at the time to, to embody any speaking roles. Apparently, well, what would be like the tallest dwarf ever? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that, did they? I was just gutted I didn't get to know what. But anyway, um, so we are uh, talking all things Kiahu at the moment. So mm. Kiahu, what people, what some people may not know about you is that you are a full blown geek. You have appeared on mm. tabletop. Um, on the YouTube show. You cosplay, and I believe that you had a doll made after your cosplay, which is pretty I cool. I did, yeah. Yeah. So let's start Let's start at the very beginning. Um, how did you first kind of fall in love with the geek world? What were, like, the influences? What, what consoles would you play? What shows did you like? What, why, how did it all begin? I, I don't think it was a, a conscious choice. <laughs> <laughs> I it was, that, it was I, that, that key moment where you're like, man, this is really cool. I, I just I spent a lot of time growing up uh, playing video games. I was I had a lot of alone time. Um, I I I was always into sci-fi. I remember watching Star Trek from a very young age. Star Wars. I have pictures of me watching Star Wars as a as an infant in diapers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and 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 I think it was just like one of those things that that I because of the people that I was around that watched that or like sat me in front of the TV and were like here watch this movie that's good <laughs> um, it just was embedded embedded in me from from a young age and um, it, it I have pictures of myself being dressed up uh, for Halloween like as Karate Kid um, Shredder. Uh, Ninja Turtles. Um, I was Indiana Jones, Batman. Um, I, I I think cosplay oh, like it was just it was all put on me as a kid. So <laughs> I, I, subconsciously, as I grew older, I think it was just always in the back of my mind. Like, oh, this is cool. Like these are things that remind me of my childhood. That that are you know those those warm fuzzy feelings. I guess. Um, speaking of the cosplay, I mean, obviously it's gone from Halloween to a lot, much, much more than that. Um, mm -hmm. I first saw it in the flesh at Comic Con last year, and it was so impressive. How, tell us about the outfit. I've got a picture of this. Taz, have we got the, yes. the picture to show everyone? I will bring um, that up. A picture. I want to know how long it took, how you got the design, because uh, this is like something that's just ridiculous. I actually so so I actually came up with that in a week. Oh what? yeah, there. There uh, is full okay. Yeah, and I because I I had I knew I wanted to do something for Comic Con. Yeah, there it is. And awesome. I wanted to do something epic. And the thing was, is I just I didn't have a lot of free time up until right bef like a week before Comic Con. And I I I had gotten a lot of ideas. Like our costume department actually helped us out. And on Teen Wolf, uh, helped me out and like telling, like helping me out figure out how to put together a lot of the pieces. And then I just had I, I hankered down like for three days before Comic Con, and I built most of the costume. Um, and I was I was still putting it together on the train when we were going down. It was just a pile of like pieces as as we were going down on the train, but. I had enough of it to put together so I could wear it when I was at the at the con. So you have the fabric for the cape, and the cape um, crosses over to your face that kind of doubles up as almost like a mask. Yeah, and, it, was a, it was a hood, yeah. Um, the cowl. And then you also had, le like, leather work. And you were talking to me the process that you had to treat this because it's it's not an easy thing to do, but you're kind of getting more and more into it. Yeah. Um, it's so that the, the actual armor pieces are... Our foam core with uh, uh, it's it's not actually leather. It's made to look like leather. It's a uh, it's a canvas painted it's canvas painted with vinyl um, that I had to wrap each individual ar piece of armor with that that material so it could look like that. And then I I attached them all individually. Then the rest of the outside, all the like 
the belts and the straps, they're all they all are actually armor or all actually leather. Yeah. But uh, it was it was quite an endeavor. I I actually spent a full day down in San Diego finishing and putting it together so I could actually wear it to that to that uh, that panel. It's not it's it's only thirty percent finished too, like from the original drawing. Wow. Well, I'm exactly. impressed that you could do so much in such a short time. You know, if you have a, if you if you really put together like a, if you know what you're you're doing and you you just you have the vision, but you and you have all the materials you need, you can do quite a bit in eight to ten hours in a full day. Yeah, that's true, and it sounds like a very typical cosplay experience. Doing it all at the very last minute, you know, on the train or in the hotel room the night before. So I'm glad it all came together at the end. Well, and what I what I learned also in the process was like. As more people were witnessing this, and I was meeting more people, they were like, "What? Like they're like, you know what I'm going through because I have five costumes." I'm like, "Wow, I have one." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but this year, I actually have quite a bit planned. Um, apparently, that that costume has put me like has kind of raised the bar, and I have <laughs> to either meet that or higher every time I. Attempt cosplay now, so it's it's been a bit of a process, but I've learned so much since building that costume, and I I can't wait to reveal so the next few projects that I have running. So, so are you know, there any, any, any oh. what's that? Sorry, I was just saying. So, are there any characters that you're planning that you could share with us now, or is it all secret? Uh, no, they're all secret. Um, <laughs> the original the, the original reason why I came up with with such an elaborate costume in the first place was that I could walk the floor incognito. Um, and I, it's the same purpose if I, I attend any cons this year uh, to walk the floor incognito, that I want to be able to just walk the floor, enjoy it as everyone else is, and then at the end of the day I'll, I'll reveal who or what I was dressed as. So, so far, like last year, the big ones were... Um Simon Pegg wore a Boba Fett um, mask, and then the Shaun of the Dead outfit. And Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston wore himself. <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, Heisenberg. He wore Heisenberg. I like that one. He was just talking about the show, and everyone's like, "Man, I love that show." I was like, "Really, really? Yeah, yeah." And he's like, yeah. "Ha ha, surprise!" Um, obviously, <laughs> one, one of the biggest conventions out there. It, I had the most fun I've ever had. At Comic Con, to explain to um, people that don't that miss out, unfortunately, that don't get to go, the why is. the San Diego Comic Con is just the tits. Why San Diego Comic Con uh, is what? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is. It's just. It's just uh, an accumulation of so many people who are into all the same things. Um, you feel like you're among a community of people who understand you, and uh, it's it's like it's like going out into to to a uh, a club or a, or a place where you're going to meet people and cracking a joke, and everybody knows your reference. Versus yeah. like going to a club, cracking a joke, and people are like, "Who's Han Solo?" <laughs> and you're like, why don't you know who Han Solo is? What is it's, that? Like? It's yeah, it's like it's like uh, you can be into a, a, a like a, a a range of genres that you know you're safe exploring and and having fun in, and everybody's gonna like be able to appreciate the art or effort that you put into it. It's like I've got a um, Triforce tattoo, right? And then people get a look at that, and they think that it's oh, is that from the Illuminati? <laughs> no, no. Stop talking to me. Um, another thing that um, you were recently on were, were, was Will Wheaton's tabletop. Can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, it was really fun. I, I, I'm a big, I'm a big gamer, uh, both online and offline. Uh, I really like to do tabletop. For me, growing up, uh, tabletop games were something of a. Uh, like a, like a, I, I grew up and I didn't have like let's have dinner at this time like family dinners, family breakfast was not a big activity. So for me, tabletop was 
uh, tabletop games were a big coming together of family or friends and really spending quality time together because it's it's about the game, but it's I, I feel like the, the experience of playing a tabletop game is half about the game and half about what's the, the relationships and interacting with the people outside of the game. Um, I, I and I and because of that passion, friends of friends knew that like tabletop was going on, and I actually saw a couple episodes, and I was like, "Wow, this is something that's." I love, and I can't believe that it's presented in such a fun way. I mean, I actually could, I could sit down and watch 30 minutes of a tabletop game of other people playing that was entertaining to me, and uh, and they invited me to come play, and I was I was more than happy to to join in and have <laughs> fun. And they, we yeah. actually played one of the best games. It was a two part episode. Hey, and you are known for that um, because we had people on our geek book page. Geek bomb page say, oh yeah, he was on tabletop. That was awesome. That's not bad at all. Did you? What other kind of tabletop games did you play growing up? Because all the girls that you see here were all in a um, Dungeons and Dragons group. Yeah. <laughs> which I want to start. Um, I've been very adamant that I want to start a Dungeons and Dragons. Group. I, I really, I wish that you wish I had played more Dungeons and Dragons. It was more of a uh, uh, Magic: The Gathering. I played Monopoly. I played uh, Mouse Trap. <laughs> Which was, no, more of, it was more of a, it was more of a let's set up the mouse trap and like l let it loose and then like set it up again and let it loose again and you and didn't then really set it up play in really elaborate ways that are different from how the game wants yeah. you to set it up. I, I played a, I also played a lot of like uh, garage sale games. My grandmother used to take we would go to garage sales and pick up old games like Purchasey or yeah. um, multi level checkers. Um, Back in and obviously, uh, and then I I lived in Germany for a while, and That's funny right. enough, Germans are very much into their tabletop games. They do love them. I've loved and, German and, friends too. Yeah, love. and I I I mean, they got me. They were like, we have some free time. Let's play tabletop games. And my okay, <laughs> my grandma used to play with, live with me all the time. So I actually discovered yeah. Munchkin through a German. <laughs> They sent me yes! a packet. I was like, what is this? Yes, then, I love Munchkin. Yeah, it was like eight years ago. It was a gift. And I was like, what is this? And then I learned how to play. And now, you know, I'm obsessed. Like, have been for a while. But yeah, <laughs> they do love the tabletop great. games. It's, yeah. like, it's like an over... It's like a highly simplified role-playing game. Like Dunge Dungeons and Dragons, but highly simplified so that anyone can play it. Yeah. That and it's over. Like I mean, when we play Dungeons and Dragons, the sessions last up to eight hours, and you've yeah. hardly made any progress, like progression and in your story. You want to do more? You can have Munchkin well, games that last for hours, though. So I've had one that lasted like a good three hours. I yeah, know, yeah. I've got a six-hour Munchkin game. Yeah. Ooh, no, I've never done six hours. But if there's you know Super Munchkin, so you get to level twenty. That um, that one can go oh, for hours yeah. and hours. Yeah. Well, well, two two nights ago, I had a game of uh of Risk here. And I, funny enough, I had the the game of the board game of Risk in its plastic wrapping for three years because I could never get anyone to come and play it. I love Risk. It's such a good Last game. Last or, or two nights ago, we played it, and it, and six of us played, and it was one of the funnest board games board game nights we've ever had. Uh, <laughs> How I did that be? I wasn't there. Deadly, I didn't win. <laughs> But uh, but it was it, it, it only lasted like an like two hours. Downstairs right now, I have um, Nintendo Monopoly in the plastic wrapping, and I have had that oh. since two thousand and ten. Now there's a game that goes forever. Well, uh, if, if anyone yeah. anyone who's seen my episode of of Monopoly or not Monopoly, uh, uh my episode of Tabletop yes. might know my story of of playing Monopoly. And funny enough, this Christmas, after my aunt watched the the uh, the interview from me playing on the tabletop, she bought me for Christmas the a new version of the game of Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> I just Monopoly and I never got along growing up. So <laughs> I I personally find it a bit boring. Too many mortgages. 
I love the first half of the game when you're getting all the property and like I had my favourites. I was like, yes, this is awesome. And I play as the boot as well. I never got that either, but I played as the boot. And then as soon as you started landing on hotels, I was just like, fuck this shit. Excuse me. But I was, I was, I was just so I was roiding out and I just was off it and then you know caused massive problems because I had two older brothers and then they're just like, finish the game, quitter. And I was like, no, I'm not doing this. Syria. <laughs> I still kind of am like that. Nothing changes. Um, well, let's talk more about uh, Teen Wolf because a lot of people are commenting and they want to yeah. know a few things about it. You played Danny, and Danny is quite a unique character, especially on TV, especially in America, because you are gay. And I know that uh, leading up to Teen Wolf, like these these pragmatic moments, it just didn't really happen. It was like such an area that people skirted over. It was like like Xena could be gay. It's like bull. You and Gabs, you know, we get it. But um, this one's like quite in your face, and I really, really respect that. Um, I had someone ask, "What are the similarities between you and Danny?" Uh, we're both um, heavily like computer savvy. In fact, that was one of the aspects of my character that was written into the show. Um, at the time, I was working at a tech company, and and flying in to shoot episodes of, of the show, and the writer wrote in that I was a hacker because of how, like, I, I would actually help him sometimes uh, fix problems on his computer, and he was like, I'm, I've got a good scene for you, and it's, it kind of works into, like, what you're doing, because writers write what they know, and uh, that, that's one aspect. Um, another aspect is, like, we're, I feel like Danny's pretty well-rounded, I mean, he plays an instrument, he's, Tech savvy, he goes out and like socializes. Uh, I, I socialize now. And then. Well, um, you are you you well rounded. It's like you're the kind of person that it's like if you pick up a ball, you can throw it really really far. You know, if it's like you have to get it, like, <laughs> three ingredients, you can cook up a meal. You speak how many languages do you speak again? Fluent uh, in German. Uh, English, German, and Chinese, Mandarin. See, like yeah. All rounded, well rounded. You're one of those overachievers. Let's be honest. No. <laughs> You're just good at things. People actually uh, have to usually try some and things, practice some things. <laughs> Very select window range of things. What <laughs> can't you do? What is it something that you are just not good at? It is an area that you have not just mastered remotely. I'm not a very good cook. Um. Let's see. That's I'm why I get a twelve. Here I can snowboard. Um, you get no idea about what you can't do. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's struggling. Uh, <laughs> I've always focused on things that I can, so then that way, like, I'm like, these are my strengths. It's good. Just, it's good to focus on the positives. Yeah, you have to. That's that's why mm -hmm. you get through life. Especially being an actor in LA, what are some of the weird, freaky experiences, um, like on the audition circuit or being an actor in LA? Because this is something that I have no idea about. Not being an actor. Oh man! I mean, you inc you encounter so many different things. I mean, I have to say the 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 strangest things, and I've gotten I've gotten used to them as an actor. You you, it's more about exploring all the different parts of life, things that go on in the world that you, I mean, you've never even thought of or or encountered in your own life, but because you never know what you can portray on screen. Um, you want to explore those parts of, of humanity in class. Um, I mean, we've between class or like with friends, you know, you, you go through scenes and you um, you rehearse different types of situations. And it's uh, being an actor, you you need to be able to go to the deepest, darkest places and the highest, happiest points of your life that you could possibly explore. Um, and that, I think that's been for me the the craziest, some of the craziest stuff I've ever done. Yeah, that's in in exactly as a whole why I'm not an actor. <laughs> <laughs> let's go somewhere really dark. I, I actually had that. I did an audition. And I ended up getting the job, and they're like, "Let's go somewhere really, really dark. What's the what's the worst thing happen?" I was like, "I don't talk. About it. I, I don't want to go there." He's like, "No, no, no. Let's go. Let's go to like the worst time of your life." No. It's like, okay. So I had to cancel the job. Um. Well, you are on TV, and it is a huge show. Um, 
the the whole the, the wolf thing, supernatural, all of those kind of elements all combined. They're doing so well at the moment. Have you met any of the Teen Wolves previously? Have you met Mum Michael Fox? And have you met Jason Bateman? Who's uh, have you met those guys? No, I ha I haven't had the honor to yet. Um, I'm sure at some point that'll happen. But uh, I need to go full circle. It's I, I have actually met the original styles. I worked with funny enough, I worked with um, the guy who played the original styles on the Teen Wolf movie. He uh, he directed the episode of Hawaii Five O that I was on. Hey Yeah. Small world. What was that like? Um it was it was fun and act it, it it was it was kind of weird because I approached him and I go, "Hey, your your style, you're the real like the original styles." And apparently they they were trying to get him on the show, but he wanted to kind of move on, I guess. Um, but he was a great guy, really fun, great director. So when do you when do you go on set and how like how many days a week is it for how long how intense is it all? Uh, it really varies. I mean, some days, you know, so we, we definitely have some downtime because they, they shoot it in block schedules so they can shoot the most efficient blocks of, of per week that they can on certain sets. Um, I mean, I, I can definitely work some 16-hour days, 15-hour days. I can My days can also be really short where I'm there for a couple of hours and I get my scenes done and no harm. I like it's in and out, but uh, it, it's you kind of just have to be on call when when we're shooting in season. What are the three best things about working on this particular series, and what are the three worst things? Uh, I don't like to focus on the negative. <laughs> uh, the three best things: the cast, the crew, yep. and yep. the food. <laughs> <laughs> I do actually eat. Food is the best thing ever. I do actually eat. What? I said food is the best thing ever in the world. That's all I think about. Our 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 craft services is I I at least I enjoy it. <laughs> I'm like chicken, fruit, and vegetables done. <laughs> no, the, 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 the occasional the occasional warm chocolate chip cookie, sure. Oh hey, there it is. I was gonna say maybe one of the negatives is the fact that you have to be in peak physical health because there is this this stigma associated with the show and especially with you every time it's like take your shirt off and you must be like take Wait yours until off night. <laughs> <laughs> what tomorrow night there's quite a bit of shirtless Danny see so is that kind of and let's not call it a negative let's call it like the it's not so glamorous list and not that so is glamorous. actually actually for this next episode uh we had quite a heat wave in LA, and during that time, I had makeup not only on the front but also on my back. So I I couldn't really. It was fine for the first hour or two, but after that, I I could never really sit back in a chair. I because because yeah. the makeup would wear would, would wipe off, so I couldn't like if I had a few hours in between shooting, I couldn't like really lay down or get comfortable because I had all this body makeup on, and that actually does get a little uncomfortable after a while. I mean, after, okay. like, five hours of being in that and not being able to sit back in a chair or, like, really mm -hmm. relax because you didn't want to mess up the, the, you know, all the patterns that were dr were drawn on you, I just, oh, man, I just wanted to break. And it was a few days of that. Oh, my God. But, I mean, on top of that, to kind of... Be on your in your A game and shirtlessness ready. Um, how many? How what kind of exercise are you doing? Because Shona is a big fit and she's our geek fitness expert. I guess you could say she loves it. Fitness and she if onto, yes. If you jump onto geek-bomb.com, she's actually written an article about how geeks can get fit in like fun and in exciting ways. So what was what, what, your okay? So first of all, I think that there's a geek stereotype of like them a like, geeks not being in shape. I actually think that there's a there is a significant population of the geeks that uh, that are in shape and you I mean it's I mean 
half their life is at the gym and the other half is online. <laughs> um, but I I definitely feel for this show, uh, yeah, like I I definitely get my diet to a minimum and my workouts to a maximum. I I wasn't consuming a lot of water. Um, it, it's it's definitely like you want to look your best on screen, and it it's it is demanding and it's it's tough because it's you know once they shoot the scene you're you, you and they move on it's there's no going back like that's what you look like for the day so you don't necessarily want your scene shot right after lunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially when so, you're starting. were you into working out before the show, or was that oh, the yeah, yeah. incentive? It's, it's, okay. No, it's been a long. It's. I mean, I've been a very active athlete for. I mean, since since my pretty much freshman year in high school. How do you fit um, it all in? Is it even, do you do it first thing in the morning, or is it when you can? Um, I like to I like to say when when people are at happy hour I am at the gym I fit my my gym into happy hour and then I go out right after. Ah, okay. Hey, Shona, what were some of the things in your, um, your article that you wanted to discuss, just to kind of raise yeah, awareness I mean, I definitely agree um, about the stereotype because although yeah, there is this yeah stereotype of the big fat guy in his mum's basement, you know, all day long, and there are plenty of geeks who are fit and in shape because really, there's no such thing as a stereotypical geek. You'll be surprised, you know, how many people are. <laughs> um, but at the same time, um, even for me, who's always been really sporty and athletic too. Um, my geeky hobbies sometimes fight for my attention to go to the gym or to go out. You know, I'll be sitting on the couch, I've been playing some game for a couple of hours, and in the back of my mind I'm thinking, oh, I really should go work out now. But then the game's calling to me as well. Um, and so sometimes I have to use a couple of other little tricks to get myself off the couch. Um, so, you know, sometimes I could be playing a game. Um, recently I was playing The Last of Us, yeah. and I was, you know, oh, I didn't want to stop. Yeah, but I'd been playing that all afternoon, and I thought I just need to take off half an hour and go running. So then I finally what? said, oh, "What's that?" I was going to say on the subject of zombies and running. There's an app that I have, and it's called Zombies oh, Run. Zombies Run. Yeah. 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 I did that one. I never got hit by a car. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Have I you seen it, by... <sighs> Sorry. Have you seen that app? I haven't used it actually. Um, it used to only be on iPhones, and I have an Android phone, and now it is on Android as well. But I sort of have my own running thing. But basically, <laughs> I was playing the game, and I said to myself, "Get off the couch, because what happens if this happened in real life? I want to be out there kicking butt. If there really was a, you know, zombie apocalypse, you know." <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, some of my. I'm other. happy. I'm happy to say that I have had a. Several of my friends say you are on my like zombie apocalypse survival group. <laughs> Honestly, I, I've been thinking about this in a lot of detail. We actually did a video on how to survive a zombie apocalypse. You have to figure out what role you would play in the group because you know you can't have two people that are warm wimps. So you can't have like two people that are really good with cooking. You need to have like the ultimate group. Have you I think thought I'd be about like who? What, who would you be? Like Carol in The Walking Dead. I think that's who I'd be like. What does that even mean? Oh, Carol in The Walking Dead. Like, do you guys watch The Walking Dead? No, so you just... Ex um, what, what's her role? What's her Oh, so she's like, she's just like, you know, she pots around the camp and like, you know, cleans, washes, looks after the sick. And then when so she... You're the when mother. It, but when it comes down to it, she protects them. Like, she, she'll punch on if she needs to. <laughs> she's good. <laughs> So you're, you're the protector, the mother, the mother figure? I What's think so, because is? I'm weak as hell. <laughs> Tara, what would you be? I think I could I think I could fight pretty well if I had to. If it came down to me and a zombie, I could take one out. So I'd probably I'd be the person going out and like getting food and shit. Okay. Oh, I need to oh, you're, the, you're the scout and the... Uh -huh. uh, Daryl. Uh, yep, the hunter-gatherer. Hunter yeah, I'll be Daryl. Who would you be? Daryl's a babe. Um, are we talking about Walking Dead specifically? No, no, <laughs> just like what, what role you would just referencing what role you would play. Um, I I think I would be more of the like I've actually had actual survival training. 
So Get like how out. how to how to build how to build shelter, build a fire, uh, wow. find north, um, build so small out with packs for a while. small animals. <laughs> I oh I, I definitely would be like the I, I feel like like not necessarily the leader but I would be like the she'd be the leader. I be think a big fire out of like. I, I would be the leader only because I'd be like this is what we need to survive, guys. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I could say that. Yeah. Lee, what would you be? Um, probably something very boring, like probably. The person who manages all the supplies, like organizes trades with other factions and things like that, because I They're think it's important uh, that we yeah. need to like ration things properly and okay. like use our supplies wisely and shit like that. So. The trade, the trade master, Shona. Mm -hmm. I think I'd be the defender. So if we've got you know the scouts already going out, I'd be the one that stays back and just like make sure no one's touching Carl. our stuff. <laughs> That's important. So I, I the only role I. Feel that I could honestly play is the get out of jail free card. So basically, <laughs> the group's under what, attack. You? Yes, I'm the one that you sacrifice <laughs> so that the group like like lives. So like Aww. you know like I'm like the, the grandmother in Dante's Peak that pushes the boat but then dies because the water was burning. You know that one. The I'm the one that yes. sacrifices themselves oh, to save damn. everyone else. I have to be because Aww. like. I don't think that I would be worthy enough to replace someone else, and it's just like, well, I'm gonna die eventually, so I may as well do it to give other someone else a chance to live. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> you are. You're the best, man. <laughs> but not. And it's gonna be a slow, horrible death, and then you're gonna see me later. Um, I'm gonna be like, you know what? Uh, Everyone's gonna die eventually. I'd, I'd say, somehow, someone's gonna die. <laughs> my morbid. best friend. My best friend is amazing. She's such a. She's such a geek. I love her. She's put together a zombie apocalypse kit, and mm. dead set. She's spent hundreds and hundreds on this. It's got everything. It's got can supplies. It's got like first aid kit, tent. It's got like like knives. It's got everything. She's, yeah, she's set, man. And she's she's always like the zombie apocalypse. You get your ass here, and and we go. And I'm like, yeah, all right. <laughs> I had an idea now because they they have to bite you, right? I thought because I used to live in Bondi Beach that the first thing that I would do if the zombies were invading is I'd go down to the surf shop and put a wetsuit on because I feel that the wetsuits are material that they couldn't bite as well, but you're they still really still mobile. Bite it. <laughs> you would run a lot slower. <laughs> Just Can like you a imagine in an apocalypse when you're out of the wetsuit? <laughs> She'd what? Have, no, you know what would happen? She'd overheat and have like a stroke. <laughs> Why don't I just put like a suit of armor on? That would, that would work better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I rock up like, like a knight. Okay, guys, I'll I'm ready. You, I'll let you borrow my cosplay. <laughs> yeah, I was saying leather oh, would leather. be my choice. Like leather, yeah. <laughs> leather. Okay, maybe I need to start getting into Leather on a hot day is really bad, though. You just sweat mm. like crazy. Mm. So is being a zombie. But I'd rather be <laughs> sweating than bitten by a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're a zombie, you're dead. Who cares? Well, apparently when you die, you become a zombie because you're already infected. Oh, yeah, that's in the show. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, everyone's infected. You're right. Mm -hmm. I really need to start watching that a little bit more than I do. Um, so we've talked yeah. about fitness and how we should all kind of do it a little bit more than we are. New Year's resolutions. Yay. Um, but let's talk back into television. So, so we've got Teen Wolf coming up, but what are some of the other geeky kind of shows that, A, we're all really, really into, and B, that we're excited for? Game of Thrones. Yes. 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 Everyone picks it. Fuck yeah. I mean, so this is, F yeah. Oh, I'm watching Sherlock. Okay, we're going too fast. Uh, the first story is that <sighs> Kiahu and I first met at a Game of Thrones podcast. So this is the hi, how are you? I met your dog Apollo for the first time, and he was little then. Oh. You got um, no doggle. Oh, he's got a beautiful dog. What's hold a on. dog? Hold on, hold on. I get him. Hold on. Yay! Yeah. So I'll keep telling the story while you get Apollo. Um, we were talking about the final, so like the last episode that um, we saw the after the Red Wedding. We discussed that episode in its entirety. So that was pretty cool. Apollo, come. And come Apollo, here. come here. Come here, Apollo. <gasps> oh, Apollo. I'm Labrador. Come here. There he is. Oh, Apollo was a puppy yeah. when I first met him, okay. and now he's Aww. Okay, go away. <laughs> so why the name Apollo? Was that any geeky reference there? Um, 
Well, you can get... Well, actually, he... So he was not named after Apollo in Battlestar Galactica. Uh. <laughs> but he was named... Uh, I, I didn't name him Apollo after the Greek god. I am uh, but I. But when people ask me, I'm like, Greek god, Battlestar Galactica, spacecraft. You pick one. You'd be surprised how many people have geeky names for their dogs. Like, I manage a pet resort, and the amount of Jar Jars and, and Obies oh, and... Someone called their dog Jar Jar. I gotta go. Yeah, Jar Jar. She's a pain in the ass, but I love her. But, yeah, I there, there is a lot of... I hate that dog. I'm... Jar Jar? I don't particularly like Jar Jar. I mean, she's a giant pain in the ass, but she's all right. She's you don't girl. say. Lives up to, lives up to the character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Um, she lives up to the character. It's name, yeah. So Game of Thrones, we're seeing that April. Have we all seen the trailer for the new season? Yes. Yeah. It looks amazing. Of course. What? Who's read the books? Maybe that's a good start. Huh. I think I'm like halfway through the book that the series is up to. I read yeah. all of them! <laughs> I know, because when we were doing the podcast, you were like, well, but just wait until next time. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I can't actually, believe who's got the throne at the end. Apparently I spoiled it for one, for one of the people that was on the podcast. You did? Yeah. yeah, right. If you want to listen to that podcast, it's on Geek Nation. We did it for, for those guys. Um, Tiffany Smith runs that one. Um, so that's obviously going to be a big one. We're seeing the finally the big powers coming to it and um, also the White Walkers, they're everywhere now. So they're a ma major threat. And there is a scene, I'm not going to spoil it, but I cannot wait to see because it's going to be in a season from one of the books. Is it in the trailer? <laughs> I feel like no. I want you to hint so I know which one you're talking no. about exactly. Can you type can, it in the chat? I can maybe say it's um a death. Another yeah, one? But which one? Yeah, yeah. Which well, one? Of course it's going to be death, but yeah. There's I think I know the one that you're talking about. Yeah, don't got... spoil it. Don't spoil Please it. Don't spoil it. Can I just say one word? Can I just put it in the chat window? Um... No, because I don't want to. I'm closing the chat window. Okay, can I say I a word that will not spoil anything and that no one would know? No, I'm not thinking of that one, Saber. Toilet. Toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean anything to anyone? That did. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, nothing great. I haven't spoiled anything. But yeah. <laughs> Has anyone here not seen Game of Thrones? If you have not seen Game of Thrones, you get need out. to sign out now <laughs> and go watch it. Yeah. <laughs> My roommate's watching it from the very beginning. Yes, oh, holy shit. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, time. in speaking of actually, I, I, I need to go soon, so I'm, I'm, oh. I apologize. That's okay. We'll just wrap things up with what other shows everyone's um, looking forward to seeing in 2014. I am really into Arrow at the moment, big time, so much. Ever, anyone else? I couldn't oh, get I'm, into it. I'm really looking forward to um, season two of Hannibal, which starts on February 28th, I think. Okay, I, haven't I really seen like that. that show. It's really good. It's kind of gruesome, but it's good. I like gruesome. I'm a big fan of Suits. <laughs> suits is funny. I, I'm a huge fan of Suits, and I, I mean, come on, we have we have Gina Torres from, I mean, it's <laughs> it's it all I comes back. I want to marry to Harvey sci -fi. Specter. He's so awesome. But we but it all comes back to sci-fi. Like we have Gina Tor Torres from Serenity, from Firefly. Mhm. Mm so that's she's your obviously your woman crush Wednesday. <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> the next the Comic Con, if I see Gina walking and you disappear, I'll put two and two together. Um, I am um, Sherlock. You mentioned it just before, Kiahu. I've watched the first three episodes of Sherlock and I'm hooked. I love it. Has, is everyone else watching Sherlock? Yes. I've still I've seen them all. And no. season four, apparently they're going to do season four, hopefully at the end of this year, so we don't even have to wait. We waited two years between two and three. Why are there so, so many Sherlock Holmes shows? Is what I want to know. There aren't. There's it's only one. Only two, not yeah. the rest. Isn't that that yeah. elemental? What it was called? Yeah, elementary. Yeah, yeah I watched some of that. No oh. one needs to watch that. Just watch there's Sherlock. old ones, and I don't know. And then you got the movie. Been around for a while. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. in it. Ben Benedict Cumberbatch. Enough mm -hmm. said. <laughs> and I, hey, can I get props for saying his name properly and not saying Benedict come on my tits, which is what I usually say every time? Yeah, congrats. Ooh, We're proud. <laughs> Pat on you. the back. Thank you. Well, I'm a little partial to saying names correctly, so. Of course. What? 
saying I mean, them correctly. You name yourself. <laughs> Mind you, I mean, I'm struggling with Maud and Maud. Hasn't let me just say, let me just say, Maud. Um, that my that that I I can't take my eyes off of your Final, final Fantasy poster. Oh really? Yeah. That? Yeah, yeah. And I've got I'm a link like, next to it. I'm, I'm like, yep, we they were friends for a reason. We are friends for a reason. That and our love of Chipotle. I think that's. Kind of <laughs> and apparently, wow. Assassin's Creed, which is oh. one hint that I will give to cosplay for. Ooh. I love Assassin's Creed. That is one what that you're gonna give? That is the one hint I will give to my one of my costumes for Comic Con. Really? Ooh. Oh, okay. Okay. If, if I go, if, if I go. Inside scoop. You'll be going for sure. You have to go. Um. All right. Really quick, we're gonna just do some question times before you have to get out of here. Um. Okay. Jace's 14 wants to know what can we expect from Danny this season um, beside Ethan? Who else should get some Danny loving? <laughs> uh, is, uh, the, oh, so these are not on the chat. Okay. Uh, so say it, say it again. Uh, Jace's 14 wants to know. Oh, there's another one here too from him. He's a big fan. What can we expect for Danny this season, from Danny this season? Um, and besides Ethan, who else should get some Danny loving? Um, lots more shirtlessness, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I worked hard for that. Um, <laughs> Be proud. And there are some surprises on the horizon. That's all I have to say. I can't. I can't say anything else. Okay. Okay. Um, another one is what Marvel slash DC comic character would you want to play beside the known ones already? Nightwing. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, is that cosplay him? Look at that Mod's one. What's a Nightwing fan? Oh, I love me some dick. I can say that because his name's Dick. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, his name is Dick. That means his name I know. Classy. <laughs> it's his name. Guys, <laughs> come on. I'm, I'm Little respect. I, I, I'm, I, I've been, I've been, I've actually, the fandom has, has identified me as, as Nightwing. <laughs> Multiple times, and I'm like, I'm like ever so thankful because that that has been one of my. It's been on my list. You have to. That's yeah. That needs to happen. We've actually spoken about this. I think I had my poster when I first bought it because I bought it at um, Kamikaze. Remember? Oh, yes. Like, yes, I saw. It. I remember seeing. Um. Another question is final question. Tabletop game. Oh, who do you play in Monopoly? What's your character that you play? What's your little icon? Oh, which uh, which little thing? I usually play the dog. Yes, me too. Yeah. Because doggles are the best kind. I actually really like the hat too. I play the hat. <laughs> and the last question is, if you could just swap uh, and be any other character in any other TV series that's on at the moment, who would you want to step in and play? Oh, that is tough. Um, any other character? That oh, that's there's kind of a context that it needs to go with because honestly, I would love to play Jon Snow. <gasps> oh, Jon Snow! Jon Snow! I love him on yeah. in life itself. You know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the context that you need that in? Uh, well, because I, I was gonna say either Jon Snow or Tyrion. Uh, mm -hmm. Tyrion. Yeah, but I would, I, I would not, I would not play a great, I, I would not play a good Tyrion. Yeah, because you're not a midget. Too tall. No, yeah. and you're not, I, it, it's just, it's not, it's, it, it would be a bad casting. <laughs> you're five, five ten, five eleven, five eleven. Six foot. No, you're not. <laughs> You're 5 to 11. No, I'm not. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> height. I'm, yeah, I know, I know height, I'm 184 but... centimeters. Oh, that's Are you tall. really? Yeah. That's about six foot. Yeah, that is, that's exactly six foot. Maybe I'm six foot then. No. Well, um, everyone else has been commenting their favorite TV show, so we're going to jump online and chat to those guys about what they're um, keen on seeing. Thank you so much, Kiahu, for dropping by and, uh, and, and this link. 
we'll share it out as well because as soon as we hang up, this will be put up on our YouTube page. If you like what you see, make sure you hit the like button. If you want more, subscribe because we get guests in every week. And Kiahu, I may see you at Magic the Gathering on a Monday night soon. What? Possibly. Sweet ass. Thanks, guys. All this right. has been Geek Bomb and the bomb, the bomb being dropped. Been dropped. Been dropped.